Walk across the Millennium Bridge today and you'll see a postcard layout of London. St. Paul's Cathedral towering ahead, Tower Bridge emerging in the distance, and the Thames running on either side of you. On the southern end of the bridge lies the Tate Modern, one of the largest modern art museums in the world, with text across its front boldly proclaiming, free and open to all. But there's another gallery before you get to the Tate, one that too is free and open to all, all who can spot it. Littered across the Millennium Bridge are many masterpieces from discarded chewing gum that raise questions of what is art? What is special about art we stumble across? Art we nearly fail to notice? A 60-year-old Londoner is making us ask these questions. His name is Ben Wilson, better known as the Chewing Gum Man, and he's been painting minuscule scenes of life on shredded chewing gum since 2004. With a mix of acrylic paint and lacquer, Ben transforms a thoughtless action, like spitting a piece of gum out on the street, into celebrations of the spaces around us. In this age of materialism, where it's a consumer society where everything's just thrown out, if you can take the very thing that's being rejected by society and make it into something special, then that means anything can change. From using cigarette butts to tin cans and crisp packets, Ben takes what is artificial and turns it into art. Ben's art is, after all, temporary in nature, a reminder that our environment is not immortal, and the actions we take have a profound effect on the beauty we seek to encapsulate. So if someone needs to just do this, they just need to pick it up. <laughs> but they think, no, it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> Wilson's motivation to transform his environment comes from a long tradition of using street art to make beauty out of abandonment. England's modern street art was born out of the punk rock movement of the 1970s when bands like Crass and The Clash promoted the spray paint stencils that would soon dress the grimy streets of London's East End. Stencil graffiti was spreading across Europe thanks to French artist Black Larotte's arbitrary images mixed with anti-consumerism messages. Banksy, possibly the most well-known street artist, painted anti-establishment works that became part of London's identity. Simply by walking through heavily graffiti districts, you could get a sense of a community's ideals and values. Ethnographer Raphael Schachter asserted that street artists seek alternative ways of approaching public space to make a meaningful connection to their surroundings. And while Banksy and Lara had more radical ways of connecting people to their surroundings, with loud images and unsubtle commentary, Wilson's goal is different. He seeks to create deeply personal experiences with his work. The majority of chewing gum paintings are for and of the people Wilson encounters on the streets. He celebrates the mundane lives of those who approach him to forge a truly special connection between people and their environment. People just kept on coming up to me and asking me to do pictures for them, you know, to do with their lives. You know, they wanted love messages, rest in peace pictures. It was just something just very natural about it. It's about the caring that counts. It's caring for each other as individuals. Oh, cheers for that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Interacting with art that is personal gives us a greater sense of belonging in our environment, which is, after all, what Schachter said is the motivation behind street art. Our perception of how we fit within our environment benefits not from art that is faceless and corporate, but from that which is personal. If thousands of people walk across Millennium Bridge in an hour, but only one person notices Ben's paintings, then it's all worth it. Art is measured by the depth of its impact, not the width. So what is art? Art is personal. It's empathetic. It's the beauty that's right in front of us but we almost fail to notice. It's an acrylic painting that shows us each life is worth celebrating, no matter how small.